In the last 28 days, my videos were viewed about 44,000 times and combined were watched for nearly 82,000 minutes or about 57 days. If you're an average viewer of this channel, then you probably live in the United States, are somewhere between the ages of 18 and 24, and are most likely male, unless you're watching this video. Being residents of one of the richest countries in the world, and the richest country in the world by GDP, you are 33% more likely to have watched one of my videos on a tablet or mobile device than on a computer. But when you did tune in, you watched only the first couple of minutes before clicking away to something else. Presumably Vine compilations. All of this information is part of the who, what, when, where, and how of the viewing audience of just this channel and YouTube is the collector and distributor of all this information. The world of television has a similar information gatherer. Its name is Nielsen, and today you're going to learn all about them. This is Behind the Screen. Welcome to Behind the Screen, where we look at media and see how it was made and why it was made the way it was. I'm your host, Victor Frost, and you hear it all the time. This show was extremely successful while that show got cancelled midway. One show got another season while this other show didn't. No matter how much any one of us likes any particular show, and we all have our favorites, what matters is how popular a show is on the whole. And how popular a show is isn't just a handy factoid for the sake of pop trivia. The answer to that question can move around a lot of money. How popular a show is and with whom determines how much money a network will charge advertisers, where in the programming block the show will be scheduled, whether a show will be renewed or cancelled, whether or not it gets syndicated, how much actors and actresses and crew will be paid. People's jobs and careers can depend on that question and its answer. So, with so much writing on it, it's incredibly important to know the answer and to get it right. While websites and blogs can use any number of tools like Google Analytics, Alexa rankings, or Adobe Analytics, in the world of television, there is only one name, Nielsen. Since 1923, Nielsen has been conducting market research to find out what people watch, listen to, and buy. Whenever you hear about a TV show's ratings, that's information from Nielsen. But what are these ratings everyone is so concerned about? The short answer is that television ratings are an estimate of how many people are watching any particular show at a given time. Of course, that is the short answer, so it must be more complicated than that. And it is. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about how ratings are done in the United States only. Here we go. First off, and I think you'll agree that this makes sense, the only people Nielsen cares about are people with at least one TV set. According to estimates, because how creepy would it be if they knew for sure, that's about 114 million households out of the 121 million total. TV is popular, who knew? That 114 million households is called the universe. And there is a smaller universe for every market. Now obviously there's no way a company of any size could measure the TV usage of all those houses. So instead, they randomly pick a subset of houses from public census data and other sources. This randomness is intentional because they want to make sure that their sample reflects the American viewing audience as accurately as possible. This is called a statistically representative sample. Every household has a chance of being picked, and if you are, they ask you if you'd like to be a Nielsen family. If you agree, they either install a little box called a people meter on all your TVs, more on those later, or they ask you to fill out a journal of your viewing habits. For your help, they compensate you. Not enough to change your life, but enough to make it worth it. Gifts, baskets, discounts on your cable bill, a, a gift card or a check every once in a while, things like that. Just enough to keep you participating, but not enough for you to start altering your own habits in an effort to please them. Yes, that is a thing that happens. 
To keep the sample clean of any undue influence and to keep the data accurate, there are some people who cannot be part of a Nielsen family under any circumstances. Nielsen employees and their families, obviously. Uh, same would go with anyone working in television, radio, the movie industry, cable or satellite providers, uh, and their employees, people working for Netflix. Basically, anyone working for the media, myself included, cannot be part of the sample because we potentially have a vested interest in the success or failure of media that is being measured. Out of the total TV universe, Nielsen currently has about 40,000 households with people meters installed. I know that may not seem like a lot compared to 114 million, but strictly speaking, they'd only have to measure about 17,000 to get a 99% accurate sample, plus or minus 1%. The more houses though, the more accurate and stable the data. Now, as a Nielsen family, you have one responsibility. When you watch TV, log your viewing. This will either be through a paper journal or by pressing a button on the remote of your people meter. Everyone living in the house will have their very own button. Once you press your button, the people meter will know you are watching. And it already knows who you are, your age, sex, and race. Just the simple act of pressing the button tells Nielsen the who, the where, and the when of the audience in front of that TV. The what and the how comes from the people meter itself, which feeds data to Nielsen HQ. Using a system similar to YouTube's content ID, Nielsen can tell exactly what channel you're on, what show you're watching, whether you're watching it live or on DVR, or through a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu. The combination of all this information is ratings. It's what a percentage of the sample that's meant to represent the population as a whole is watching at any given quarter hour. But this is still a pretty high level explanation. If you want to get down into the nitty gritty with me with all the numbers and math that makes ratings work, I'll be putting out another video this week doing just that. And when it comes out, there'll be a little link um, right around here. Or, you know, you could click this thing if you want to use the YouTube cards feature. It's fancy. Um, but in the meantime, how about you jump over to my friend Erin's channel and check out her show, Director Quest. She and I have very different styles, but we both share a fundamental love for media and the arts. We actually have pretty similar degrees, though as I understand it, she's definitely focused more on theory and high-level artistic concepts, while I'm, you know, focused more on production and the technical stuff. She's also a lot funnier than me. The show is on hiatus, but you should definitely bounce over to her channel and watch Director Quest. Uh, you can click the link here, or again, fancy. And if you're still here, the punishment selection video for the last time I was late with the video will be out shortly. There'll be no punishment for this video being late because there was a family emergency. Uh, I had to deal with it, and that is a legitimate reason for being late with a video. Thus, no punishment. Uh, anyways, I'm Victor Frost, and I'll see you next time.